about limits. I'm going to try to keep this this one kind of quick. Um, but, so let's see. So with limits, we talked about graphs and looking at the graph and, and reading the limits. Remember that this limit right here, uh, what that means, and this is a, I'm just going to rewrite. I think we did this in class. But this is saying that um, the way you read that is the limit of f of x. As that's an a, whatever. As x approaches negative one, negative one. There. All right. So the limit of f of x as x approaches negative one, and the way you answer limits when you're looking at graphs. Now we're going to learn several different ways to do this. But when you're looking at graphs, the way you answer this limit is um, as the function. as the function or the graph approaches an x-coordinate of negative 1. And the key part is from both sides. And we'll deal with one-sided limits later. But when it doesn't specify this is x approaches negative 1, we look at both sides. So you have to look from both sides. So as the function approaches negative 1 from both sides, what y-coordinates do, does each side approach? What y-coordinates do this, what y-coordinate, yeah, kind of stuttering there, what y-coordinate do both sides approach? And approach is a big word here, and you'll see why in some of these later problems. Uh, but that's how you answer that question. As the function approaches the x-coordinate of negative 1 from both sides, what y-coordinate do both sides approach? Um, or y-coordinate does both sides, do both sides approach? Whatever. Um, so here, if we're approaching negative 1, here's negative 1. I showed you all this in class. I kind of like to visualize a dotted line going down x equals negative 1. And as I approach negative 1 from both sides, so as I come from the left and I come from the right, both sides are approaching the same place. So the answer to part D is um, they are both approaching a y-coordinate of 3. Down here, this one, x approaches 0. What is the limit of f of x as x approaches 0? I'm going to take that same dotted line visual, and I'm going to move it to x equals 0. And then I'm going to look at my graph from both sides of 0, and I'll see what does my graph do as I get close to 0. So from the left side, and from the right side, they do both go to the same place, and they both go to a y-coordinate of 2. So d1 is 3, and 2 is approaching 2. Uh, graph E. We have another graph. First one, what is the limit of f of x as x approaches negative 2? So I'm going to find negative 2. Here's negative 2. Visualize that dotted line. And then I'll look both sides. So coming from the left, and from the right, do they go to the same place? They do. They both meet at a y-coordinate of positive 2. So the limit of f of x as x approaches negative 2 is 2. Now then we'll do the same thing. Same thing, except here I'm approaching 3. So now I'm going to move my graph, my vertical line, over to x equals 3. And this one does kind of a funny thing. This graph comes to a little point. That's called a cusp, which we may talk about cusps later. Um, but it's a cusp. And from the left and the right, if I follow the left and I follow the right, they do both go to the same place, and they both get to a y-coordinate of negative 1. So there are your answers for E. And you read that, the limit of f of x as x approaches negative 2 is 2. This one, the limit as x approaches 3 of f of x is negative 1. Um, moving on to f. Now, this is where we tend to start to get angry with the concept of limits. Uh, number one, the limit as x approaches negative 2. The limit as x approaches negative 2. Well, if I move my dotted line to negative 2, so here's negative 1, negative 2, so here's negative 2. And this one's interesting because we have a hole at negative 2. And you tend to get mad at these when there's holes. But what's happening at negative 2 makes absolutely no difference in how you answer the limit. The limit is more concerned with what's happening around negative 2 not what's happening at negative 2. 
we're looking around x equals negative 2, just to the left and just to the right. So if I look just to the left, my graph is coming in right here. If I come from the right, my graph is going in up here. And even though there's a hole, even though we never actually get to that point, they are still approaching. It's like they're trying to get to a y-coordinate of 3. So even though there is a hole, the left side and the right side, they are going to the same place, and they are going to a, a y-coordinate of 3. I know they don't get there, but that doesn't matter. What's happening at negative 2 does not affect the limit. So there is a hole, but the limit still exists because left and right are going to the same place. Uh, number 2 down here, limit as x approaches 3. Same thing. I'm going to move my vertical line over to x equals 3. So here I'm at x equals 3. And again, we're looking at a very similar situation. If I come from the left, the left side of 3 is coming in right here. The right side of 3 is coming in right here. And the left and the right, they are going to that same y-coordinate where the hole is. And that y-coordinate is negative 2. Even though they never actually get there, the limits do exist, and you kind of have to think we're, we're looking around the x-coordinate. We're not actually getting to negative 2. It's what happens as you approach it. What happens as you get close to negative 2? Same thing here. As x approaches 3, as we get close to 3, the left and the right sides are around negative 2, but they don't actually get there, and that's no big deal with limits. Um, number j, the limit as x approaches negative 2. going to do the exact same thing. Put my little dotted line because it helps me to see that visual. I'm thinking that x equals negative 2. And then I'm going to look from the left and from the right. So looking at my graph, from the left side, I'm coming up here. Actually, I'm going to draw on top of it. I think that works okay. From the left, I'm coming in here. From the right, I'm coming down here. But this one's a little bit different than the last one, or at least it looks that way, because we have this pesky point up here. And there is a point up there, but that point does not affect the limit. And what you have to remember is with limits, it doesn't matter what's happening at the x-coordinates. Maybe we need to make a little note, note of that. Limits don't care what's happening at the x-coordinate. Don't care what's happening at the x-coordinate. Okay, the whole deal with limits is you're wondering what's happening right around the x-coordinate. And if I were able to completely block out that section, if I could block out what's happening at negative 2, my left and my right sides, my left side right here, my left side and my right sides, they are still going towards that y-coordinate of negative 3. So this one, the answer is negative 3, even though there's a point up here. But I don't care what's happening at negative 2. Around negative 2, left and right sides are both going to a y-coordinate of negative 3. Um, if I wanted the answer to be up here, this, this point right there, that point, if I ask you what is f of negative 2, well, now I'm not asking you a limit. If I say f of something, now I'm actually looking at x equals negative 2. And the answer to f of negative 2, that is going to be that y coordinate, f of negative 2 is 2, because that's looking specifically at negative 2. Limits, I don't want to look at negative 2. I'm just looking right around it. And right around negative 2, I'm coming down to negative 3. A y coordinate of negative 3. Um, let's see, moving on to that other part over there. Uh, limit as x approaches 2. Limit as x approaches 2. Come down here as x equals 2. Now I'm looking at left side and right side. So my left side at 2, coming in up here. Left side's coming in up here. Right side, though, is doing something different. As I come from the right, I'm coming down here. Now, this one, if left and right don't go to the same y-coordinate, and that's singular, if they don't go to the same y-coordinate, the limit does not exist. And we'll signify that with just D and E. And that's pretty standard. That is acceptable by the Math League of America. Um, so they have to go to the same y-coordinate. They have to go to one place. If it's two different places, the limit does not exist. And that's why... When I was filling in this note over here, that's why I left this as y coordinate. I didn't put y coords. Uh, said what coordinates do both sides approach. That's because they have to go to the same one in order for the limit to exist. Um, number k, limit as x approaches negative 2. Same type deal. Here's negative 2. And remember, limits don't care what's happening at negative 2. Left side 
is coming in up here, right side, coming in down here, they are not going to the same place. There's a jump. This limit does not exist. Even though, if I asked you what is f of negative 2, if I asked you for f of negative 2, there actually is a point. I filled in that point right there. f of negative 2 is 4, but that doesn't affect the limit. The limit still does not exist because my right side is coming in down here. Uh, the limit as x approaches 5. Now, this one I'm getting kind of mean. But if you look at 5, we'll see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, limit as x approaches 5, what you have to remember is you have to look at both sides. You have to look at both sides. And this one's going to be really tough because there is not a right side to this 2x equals 5. Um, so I can look here and I can come from the left. From the left side, I'm going here, but there is no right. There's nothing happening over here. So since there's not a right side, this limit also does not exist. You have to look at both sides. And then finally, how long am I? 11 minutes? Okay. Finally, this one, x approaches 1. Now, this is, a, this is like your greatest, or it is your greatest integer function. It's got a slight transformation. But if I come in at x equals 1, if I come in at x equals 1. Now, there's not a whole lot to the left and the right, but there is a left and the right. And it's little bitty, but the left side is coming in right here. The right side, as short as it is, is coming right there. Left and right sides do come in at the same place, and that y-coordinate is 0. So this one is 0. There's not a whole lot, and it's doing some really funny things when I get far away from 1, but right around x equals 1, left and right sides do agree. Uh, x equals negative 4. Let's move my vertical line over to negative 4 and see what's happening. So negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, and this limit right here. If you come from the left, if I follow my graph, the left side is coming in over here. Right side is coming in up here. Left and right sides are going to two completely different places. This limit does not exist. And there you go. So there are the answers to that. You just have to bring this completed tomorrow. Uh, and in class on Tuesday, we're going to review because we do have a test Wednesday, Thursday this week.